Welcome, everybody. I'm Charles Payne, in for Neil Cavuto. And as lawmakers whine about those automatic spending cuts, news our deficit topped $205 billion last month. Gina London says if Washington is crying over small cuts, how are we ever going to worry about this monster of a deficit? She's joined by Linwood Brooks and Ford O'Connor. Uh, O'Connell. Hello. Uh, Gina, I want to start with you. This is uh, is nuts. I mean, the big time money piles up, and we keep looking at this eighty-five billion, which, in a grand scheme of things, is the proverbial drop in a bucket. The drop in the bucket is exactly right, Charles. If you look at February uh, of last year compared to February of this year, we went down in our deficit each year from the $235 billion last year in 2012 to $205 billion, I believe it is. Like $25 billion is all we've done with a $600 billion tax hike that we've just paid. You look at those kinds of numbers, you'd have to multiply that times eight. In other words, a 4.6 or 8 a trillion dollar tax increase on mostly middle class Americans just to stop adding to our debt. This is really where we are. These clowns in Washington, D.C. make the Greek uh, po politicians look, you know, really fiscally sound these days. Right. Linwood, uh, what, what do you think about that? Well, I mean, she's right on eighty five billion dollars over seven months, which is what the sequester will cut from March 1 to the end of September. And we ran way over that in one month. And the reason we have to get our debt under control is because that's how we're going to really turn the economy around. Our debt is now over 100 percent of the size of our entire economy, and it's really constraining growth. It's one reason why we're seeing such a stagnant recovery. You know, uh, Ford, uh, I guess uh, at this point, can we all admit we do have something of a spending uh, spending problem? Well, I, I think we do, and, and what it shows is how ridiculous the president's sequester shenanigans were. The, the deal here is very simple. You know, the president thinks that we can tax our way out of this, and he doesn't want to talk about it. And the fact remains, if we tax everybody in this country who made over a million dollars this year at 100 percent, that would only bring us up to $726 billion, and the deficit this year alone is going to be eight to nine hundred billion. The bottom line is until we modernize entitlements, Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, which are 62 percent of federal spending and with 10,000 people turning 65 every day, it's going to continue to grow. So if we don't address entitlements, this is going to continue. And the, and the sad part is the president doesn't want to talk about it because by not talking about it, essentially we could wind up devaluating, devaluing our currency and hindering private sector job growth, which is the only way we're going to get people back to work. Well, Gina, you know, uh, we just had a jobs number. The president may say, look at that, a really robust jobs number. So maybe we are getting people back to work. We can have our cake and eat it, too. We can spend a whole bunch of money and have a robust economy. I wish that were true. It's not that simple, and we all know it. And, and, and nobody knows you know, how those numbers really break down yet. But this is the deal. If this is a print and borrow do -si do that this president has had us on uh, from the beginning of his presidency, and, and that is his approach to this. Americans are going to have to make a decision, and certainly the GOP in Washington, D.C. is going to have to make a decision whether they are going to continue this print and borrow do -si do and continue to just tax people to the tune of $4.8 trillion if we're really talking about taxing this debt away, or are they going to cut spending? And it's going to have to be serious cuts, and they're going to have to have some serious spinal cord, which we're just not really seeing out of either side right now. You know, maybe, Linwood, the answer will be sort of like this payroll tax hike when uh, oh, the new health care law taxes kick in. And uh, we already see now where at least 35 percent of them are going to be paid by people and families that make less than a quarter of a million a year. Maybe when it really starts to hit Main Street in the wallet, the people who heard the rhetoric heard that they would be immune from this stuff. Maybe that's when the tide turns. Well, I hope so. And look, I have uh, more confidence that the tide is turning, Charles. I mean, if you look uh, at 2004, government spending wasn't even an issue. And it was still, you know, Bush was still spending and he was spending about as bad as Obama. But the point is, if you look at what the public cares about, right behind jobs in the economy is government spending. So there's still a long way to go in educating Americans on, on the difficulty in addressing this problem by really by modernizing the entitlement programs, as Ford was saying. But I think we've seen Americans come a long way since 2004, right. Charles. Well, there's, you know, Ford, that's interesting because Americans have come a long way. And yet, uh, you know, the election outcome wasn't much different than four years earlier. And there's still this issue of people not wanting their entitlements to be cut. They're OK with the notion of cutting them, but just maybe not mine. 
Well, that's the American way. Unfortunately, if we're actually going to get the debt under control, both parties are going to be have to be honest. The GOP is going to have to say, you know, have some spinal cord, as Lynn would say. But also the Democrats are going to have to be serious about what the effects are. And, and to be perfectly honest with you, we can all sit here and talk about this, but really the folks out on Main Street really don't know about this. All they know is that we've got a serious problem and nobody's explained to them why it's eventually going to hit their bottom line. How do you explain that to them in a, in a way that makes it, gives them a sense of urgency because a lot of times when it's explained, it feels like, okay, you know what, We're, something real bad is going to happen 20, 30 years from now. Well, that, that's exactly right. And if we don't get this under control, essentially there aren't going to be any more jobs and your buying power is going to go down. Right now, a lot of people say, gee, you know, we need to increase the minimum wage because the price of milk's going up. The price of milk's not going up. The value of your dollar is going down. And at the end of the day, whether you're rich, poor, we're all in this together and we've got to put America back on a path to fiscal sanity. Right. Uh, Gina, I started with you, want to end with you, uh, the idea that both parties can be quote unquote honest uh, with the American public, uh, is that where I lose all hope? <laughs> Perhaps. It's definitely going to take some tough talk. And again, the GOP needs to stand their ground. And I, and I really believe this would be the smart thing for them, not only economically, but politically. The American people are feeling this. They they packaged this as, as a as a the $600 billion tax increase as supposedly on the rich. We all know this hit Social Security uh, taxpayers more than anyone else. And most of those people are middle class. So the Washington, D.C. is lying lying to us and if the GOP would call out the Democrats on this I, I believe it would it would really behoove them to do so especially right Gene, now. Gene, let me say one thing it's not just the GOP calling them out it's also explaining the problem we can say that the GOP right. has the high ground right now but both parties really have to be in this together absolutely we need honesty and we need uh, someone to really truly articulate this but you guys by the way you did a fantastic job doing that and I appreciate it